Hello everyone and welcome back to another Good Game Empire video. Today we'll be talking about Glory Events, which is the Foreign Lords and Bloody Crawls, and I will be teaching you how to participate in those events and how to get as much glory as possible to compete in for the list of rewards, for tops, and to basically strengthen your account by participating in those events. So let's begin. Uh, first I'll talk about the difficulty levels which you can choose from on this event. So the higher the difficulty level the better basically because I guess most of you don't have master or master, pro master plus unlocked yet. Uh, if you do you can go for expert, expert plus because master and master plus the top like 9th and 10th difficulty levels with red icons uh, I would say they are not too efficient and you will have a lot of losses. But Expert and Expert Plus, if you have those difficulties, I would say that they are the perfect choice for most of the players. Um, but if you see um, losses from 3 to 4000 troops per attack on Expert Expert Plus, then you can go for Hard Plus maybe. Hard Plus is the lowest level I would recommend because lower levels have a very small amount of rewards and very small castles, so you're wasting your glory banners basically. And speaking about rewards, just to mention the amount of seeds you can get from those events. And when you participate on difficulty level expert, you will get 200 seeds for completing the list of rewards, which isn't that hard, making 83 million glory points is very quick and very easy. And if you go for expert plus, then you can get 250 seeds, which is an awesome uh, amount of rewards for uh, just a 3 day long event. And how to unlock higher difficulty levels, I will um, remind you that you can go to, sorry not there, you can go to achievements and go to events, scroll all the way down there and it's um, it's different for for the foreign lord and for the blood crows. Uh, you need to make a dozen of attacks on the current difficulty level you have unlocked to get uh, the one tier higher difficulty level for free for the next events. And that's it about the difficulty level, so uh, go as high as you can, but if your losers get to 3-4 thousand, then you can stop or go one difficulty level lower. So now let's move to the preparation for this event, where one of the most important parts is the build items, and especially the appearance build items with temporary effects. And let's move on to this topic now. So, first I will show you a quick way of getting... Um, upgraders for those appearance items and how I do this uh, basically on each event from Master Blacksmith because this will be your basic setup if you go on hard plus maybe expert uh, you can participate in the event with those um, items I would say up to hard plus because uh, from the expert difficulty you will need a few uh, more from reward lists but just from Master Blacksmith is fine up to level difficulty level hard plus so the way I do this is first I purchase some uh, purple appearance items for gold pieces, for example the uh, farmhouse something something, old tree farmhouse, yeah? So let's buy three as an example and then you go to your build items, to your appearance build items click on farmhouse or granary to see only those items and you disassemble those items to have a chance of getting uh, item boosters in this case most of the time you'll get epic booster uh, yeah, we've got one epic booster, one rare build, uh, build item booster, and another epic build item booster. So how you do this is, and then you go to Master Blacksmith and you buy, um, for silver piece, you buy grey items which you want to actually apply for your buildings. And this way you will get epic uh, rarity of those items by just paying silver and gold instead of, uh, well, you can't get those upgraders, uh, you, you can't buy epic rarity items you need to get the upgraders and then uh, buy the grey ones and upgrade them afterwards so the most important ones are there is five of them which you need to have in mind uh, first is bakery the old tree bakery or whatever um, yeah and the bakery gives you melee strength then we have a uh, hospital it's one of the most important it gives you more units on the front and thus it increases the amount of units in total in the attack by far and increases uh, the strength of the attack thus lowering your casualties. Next we have the old tree keep and increases strength uh, in the courtyard that's an obvious one 
Uh, then we have stone which not quarry, but the stone mason. It increases range unit strength. And the last one is storehouse, which increases the amount of units on the flanks. So the way you do this, you first buy them. Uh, I already have them. You buy the gray rarity and you apply the gray rarity. Let's take, for example, I don't know, um, yeah, military hospital, for example. So I have the purple one. But the way you do this is you apply the gray one here. I'm not going to do it. Oh, it's four hours remaining, so I can actually sacrifice it. So you apply the gray uh, item on the buildings you want to boost with the effects. Then you click here to boost temporary build item and to apply the epic big uh, epic build item booster, which we got um, by selling the items. Right. So those five items and extra defense workshop item, which you can easily get from alliance rewards, from in, uh, individual rewards, here top 100 in glory events, here alliance top um, as well and somewhere in the list of rewards, I don't remember which event exactly, but you can get it very, very easily, I guess most of you have them on your accounts. So you can, for example, apply the um, green one and upgrade it to Epic Rarity to get extra 60% in the courtyard. And this, uh, adding the military hospital 45 front unit. Um, then we have Stone Mason 30 range, Storehouse 45 flank, and the keep, I actually have the legendary one from the Master Blacksmith, 60% in the courtyard will give you a huge bonus uh, and also bakery, but I have the Pirates bakery. It's very similar. Right, so this is the basic setup for up to hearts plus difficulty levels. But if you want to go beyond that, for example, expert, expert plus, uh, there are a few extra items which I will mention now. So the first one is the drill ground. You can get it from Samurai list of rewards and tops or you can get it from the Wheel of Outlands and it increases the amount of units on flanks. Uh, then we have Marketplace, it uh, gives you more strength to melee units. Then we have Sawmill, you can get it easily from Nomad Invasion from List of Rewards, I think you can buy it for in the shop as well. And it increases the front unit limit by far, thus increasing the amount of units in the attack. And Siege Workshop for range strength, similar to Marketplace, but it gives you range instead of melee. Uh, I think that's it, um, yep, that's it, so like five more items which boost your attack strength by far, and then you can go for Expert, Expert Plus, I think, easily, with those appearance items. Right, so we've talked about it, and then one more thing about the build items is that you should remove all the items which increase the unit limit uh, on the wall of your main castle, because this will lower the amount of troops which the uh, Foreign Lords and Blood Cross castles have on their walls and it will be easier to breach through those walls and to have lower casualties on the wall. Um, I also have another item for, where is it, for the guardhouse, removing that one as well because it, would, uh, it will lower the amount of troops which the foreign lord councils have uh, on them. And then let's go to equipment, to the commander. So the most important thing is the hero and let's take an example uh, from this one you need strength in the courtyard of castle lords. So glory targets are classified as castle lords and this is the type of the effect that you want to apply for your commander. Strength in courtyard of castle lords, the top one uh, bonus which you need. The uh, melee and ranged strength is also important when attacking castle lords, as well as flank unit limit and front unit limit. Uh, they are also good bonuses, so if you have like courtyard and at least two of the four of bonuses which I said before, uh, then it's a good commander. Uh, additional wave is pretty much a must for for good commander, and also strength to horrors if you're attacking with horrors, or strength to mid units if you're using mid units in your attacks. And um, next up we have wave items. So if you're participating up to hard plus difficulty, I guess in all the difficulties you should have extra waves from this appearance item, uh, no matter what is the difficulty. So you can get them easily, for example from the rewards, you only make 50 million of glory points and you get this for 8 days, plus three ways and 30 to flank and front limit, that's an extra item. Uh, same you can get from Nomad, from all the events you can get from the rewards, um, similar items. Or you can purchase plus 5 waves from uh, for 12 hours for 7.7 thousand rubies from the equipment trader. Or you can purchase a special offer which gives you this appearance item 
for two weeks for 30,000 rubies. And it also, also gives you like castle look as well, I think. Yeah, like this one. So it's a very profitable for active players, like small spenders and big spenders, obviously. Uh, it's a very good choice there. So next we move on to the equipment. You want to get 140 melee and 140 range shank from the basic equipment, as well as 100 shank in the courtyard and 50 to front and 50 to flanks. Uh, would be perfect. And for the gems, you're mostly mm, aiming for strength in courtyard of castle lords uh, to get up to 60%, which is the maximum limit. I've got 59 here, as you can see, um, because this is the most important bonus on the gems. Also, important bonuses are, for example, um, range of units uh, of range, strength of range units, strength of melee units, as well as unit limit on the front and flanks uh, would be good bonuses on the gems. Okay, and lastly, the generals. So Alyssa would be the best general. Um, Leo is also good, but Thor is good as well. So the most important thing you want to aim in the general is the space for the um, courtyard assault wave. So in the skills you go uh, for this ability uh, or effect rather, and you max it out to get as many more troops in the courtyard as possible because the casualties on the wall in case of um, glory targets are very, very low. So you don't actually need those skills which are more important when fighting on the wall. If you have some skills which increase strength in courtyard, that's nice. Or if you have some skills which, I know, kill instantly kill some troops on the courtyard, then, then it's also fine. But the rest is not that important. The courtyard assault space is the most important. You can also use like appearance items. I don't have any, but appearance items which give you more troops to the assault wave. It would be also a nice item to have. And also remember about the alias bonuses. It has a huge impact. I'm talking about the combat shank bonus against foreign castles. And have in mind, it says foreign castles, but it also applies in the same way for blood crow invasion for blood crow castles. It works the same. It only has the foreign castles for written, but it works for uh, both those events. So it's very important to activate and have in mind that you need to activate on level five. Uh, if you don't have it active, you need to scroll like right arrow here in this place, scroll to level five, activate it. It's very, very cheap. Vigor doubles are the easiest to get for your alliance. So it's very, very cheap to activate. And we have other bonus, which is glory bonus for attacks. But actually it's very, very expensive for your alliance treasury. And it doesn't give you a huge impact because it is 100%. And imagine that, uh, for example, a horse tail banner give you uh, 5% each. So if you use 20 horse tail banners more, it would have the same effect as this temporary effect. And therefore, I would say that it is not profitable to activate this effect because it's pretty expensive for the treasury and it doesn't make any impact on the attack. In total, it will give you 1% more glory from the attack, which is very, very small difference. I wouldn't recommend activating it. Right, so we have all the theoretics um, spoken about. So now let's move to the world map and actually see some glory castle targets and speak about them. So um, attacking the castles isn't actually that hard. It's pretty simple. Uh, what you want to do is first make an espionage of the enemy and then check what's inside. So you want to make sure that they don't have too many melee units on their flanks or front. But front is not a huge problem because you as a attacker have more troops on the front. You need to pay attention to flanks and see if there is not more than 300. Well, it depends on the strength of, uh, of, on, of your strength and of the glory target strength. But as a general rule of thumb, uh, I would say if there is more than 300 of melee units on one of the flanks, then you should go and change the do the exile and change the defensive setup because if you do this uh, remember to change from gold or silver pieces because it's too expensive to uh, the event tokens you check again and you'll see that it changes their defensive setup and if you had too many melee troops on the flank then you do this and hopefully you get a better castle in this case there is 230 and that's fine and why actually you need to avoid having too many melee troops on one of the flanks of the glory castle target? Well, the answer is simple. If there is too many of them, have in mind that they also have a strength when defending against ranged soldiers. 
we will be attacking with ranged soldiers and shields, so we don't need to care about the ranged defenders, but if there's actually too many melee defenders that they are able to kill our first wave of the attack with ranged troops, um, then the first wave will die and the following waves where we put um, glory banners will have no tools to fight against those, those defenders which survived the first wave and if the whole flank will die it will result in not getting 30% bonus to the courtyard as first problem and second problem losing 2000 troops on the flank because you didn't manage to uh, breach through this, this flank because you mm, didn't kill all the melee troops in the first wave of the attack. I will explain how to manage this problem um, at the end of this video, but the, the easiest way is to just exile the castle and get a new defensive setup. So let's begin attacking, remember to have um, 3000 honor points which increases your bonus uh, of glory, of getting glory points to 100%. It has a deep, mm, significant impact on, on the glory gain in the attacks. Alright, I'm just gonna move my wave item to, to my main commander uh, with Toril because Toril has more uh, more space for the quarter assault wave. Alright, so how we do this? Uh, first we mark one wave because we will be preparing a preset. And I recommend to use 50-50 melee and ranged troops uh, when attacking the mm, glory targets. So it depends how many troops you have, maybe you want to kill some of your melee troops, let's say you have too many of them, you get want to get rid of them or something. That is fine, you can put more melee or more uh, ranged, it won't make a huge impact, but in the best case uh, you would put their 50-50 melee and strength troops. Now we're putting glory banners of course, I will go, let's say with the 8% or maybe 9% target. Uh, I mean, banner, not target. Alright, and this is how we will proceed in the following waves. So let's save it as a preset, I have this foreign flags uh, preset named, save it and appeal, uh, uh, use it in all waves, applying preset to all the waves here. And remember to use left flank front and right flank so all the sides, all the sides uh, get applied. And that's how, we, mm, fair, that's how we do the first part. Now we move to removing the first wave. So you can use this button or you can use the clear button here. Mark only the first wave, uh, click clear. And now we will use a out of field because it does a good job when attacking glory targets actually. So you go for, for first wave only, you only choose ranged soldiers, no melee soldiers here, and you only choose event tools. Remember to save for next attack, which will, you know, you don't have to click these things uh, each of the attacks then. And remember to only choose event tools. Uh, you might ask why event tools? Why not, for example, a light or combo? That's why. Uh, that's because event tools have minus twenty strength. The, sh the shields uh, for glory targets have minus twenty strength um, to range soldiers, and this is more than fifteen compared um, for the light and combo tools. And fifteen could be in some cases not enough, so you don't have enough space for the tools to use the smaller bonus tools. So you need to go with tools which have the biggest bonus possible. So we click fill waves and the auto fill will take care of enough tools which you need to put on all the sides to attack this castle. All right. So that's how we deal with the with killing the troops on the wall and remember to fill the courtyard assault wave. Uh, try to have as many troops as possible in here. And I guess that that's it. That's it. First wave is fighting with the units on the wall, then the following waves are traveling to the courtyard uh, with the glory banners, same for the uh, courtyard assault wave. Alright, so that's how you go. And second example will be with increasing with fortifying. So fortify, what it does, it gives you 20 to 40% more troops and you will get more glory from a castle where it's more defenders of course so mm, this is a good way for medium and big ruby spenders to get more glory from their um, targets right i need one more five waves item but i guess we can go with the four waves will be enough let's see and we do the same basically but we get more glory so this is be this is going to be the second example Again, we choose all the waves and we apply the preset we created uh, a moment ago for all the waves. And then we only choose the first wave, we clear it and then we fill it with mm, event tools and with our ranged soldiers. And one more thing to have in mind, uh, 
a little pro tip here. Uh, you can see that this commander has actually more space on the front than the previous one where we were um, saving the preset. So in this case you can just go all waves and auto fill with whatever you want to use, for example only melee, and it's gonna add the troops which can be fit in all the waves. It's not gonna change your tools if you've put them already, uh, it's not gonna change them. Okay, so that's how you deal with it, maybe some weaker troops in the quarter assault, for example those, and I guess that's fine, that's how we can attack uh, this glory target. Okay, let's launch the attack, and in a second we will be taking a look at the battle reports and analyzing what has happened in those attacks. Well, the attacks have returned, so we can now see the reports, we've got a bunch of rewards, uh, yeah, they are still on the go, but we can already see the reports, so let's take a look. Uh, the first one was without uh, strengthening this, this castle for rubies, without uh, fortifying, and we've got 17.3 million glory points when losing 2,153 uh, attackers. So let's see inside, and as you can see the casualties on the walls are very 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 small. Um, it's like 200 in total on the walls and we lost 2,000 in the keep in the courtyard. So, well, nothing more to say here. Um, this is a good, good report for expert difficulty level, losing 2000. Getting 17 million is a very good score. Now let's take a look at the second report, where we had fortified enemy uh, and more defenders, actually. Yeah, 17,000 compared to 23,500. We've lost 3.4 thousand uh, attackers in this battle and we've got nearly 22 million glory points. Very nice score. And again, uh, attackers lost uh, here on the walls is very, very small number. And the majority of this is in the keep. We've got a little bonus from Vengeance, uh, from the Alyssa bonus. Well, that's that's not that important. And um, yeah, so yeah, as you can see, this works very well. And those casualties are, are, accept are acceptable for the difficulty level we've chose, which is expert. So now last thing how to deal with uh, too many melee troops if you, for example, fortified it with rubies and you don't want to fortify again uh, to change the defensive setup because if you fortify and then uh, do the exile, you're gonna lose the extra troops you've got from fortifying, so don't do this. So if you want to uh, attack even though there is more melee troops, let me show you. Alright, so here we have a perfect example of what I was talking about, 464 melee troops. So let's pretend that you did fortify on this castle and you don't want to change its defensive setup. How to go with this one? Well, let's go attack. And first uh, first step is the same. You basically go with uh, the preset with the flags and troops for the courtyard. You put the courtyard assault to have it already um, set up and how to deal with these troops. So, first wave we do the same, we uh, clear it, uh, not malice, sorry, right troops of course, we clear it and we fill that wave. And then uh, we want to make sure that we will breach through the right flank in this case, because there is so many melee troops, melee defenders that one wave of ranged with shields may not be enough. So how to deal with this? You unmark the flanks you don't want to change, we go for the second wave, we hit clear, and only right flank was chosen, so it only cleared right flank in the second wave, because only second wave is picked here. And now we put fill waves, and this will ensure that we will breach through this, mm, this wall. If there would be even more of them, we would go for the third wave, and do the same. And now we have 100% guaranteed that we're gonna breach through it, and the following troops in, on the right flank, in the next waves, after the first, second and third wave, will not die and we're not gonna lose like 2000 or even more troops in case of this attack. Uh, also remember about filling the empty space if you've got some... I'm oh, not on this commander actually. Okay, so I guess we're ready to go and this is how you attack targets if they have so many melee troops on their flanks. I had the similar example so we're not going to wait for this attack to hit actually. I did it before and well 2.4 casualties, 18 million glory points. And the situation here was, look, uh, we had 398 uh, attack defenders, melee defenders, and as I predicted, one wave of ranged attackers was actually not enough to breach through this defense. 
we only killed 268 out of, uh, out of 400 melee defenders. So then we go to second wave, which also had the same tools and rage troops, because I predicted that we should put more uh, combat waves there. So we, we've put two combat waves in this case, and we've breached easily through the, uh, through the rest of the troops of the defenders which were left after the first wave hit. And the next waves are protected here, safe to go to the quarter because there's no, no more units on this flank. So that's how we deal in this situation. And I guess we've come to the end of this guide. So if the video was helpful, remember about leaving a like. And if you like my videos, if you want to see more similar content about Good Game Empire, then remember to subscribe to my channel. And that's gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, maybe I forgot about mentioning something, maybe you have another brilliant idea for this event and you want to share it with other players, then be sure to send it in the comment section and I'm gonna answer all the questions and pin the comment which may include, for example, good tips for other players uh, if you have some good ideas. Alright, also remember about joining my Discord server, it's a nice place to talk about the game and have notifications about prime times, sales, ruby building, offers and so on, there's a lot to discover. When you join, you get a message with all the features of the server from my outward bot, so you're gonna get to know what is here for you. Alright, so that's all for this video and thank you for watching, see you in the next one, bye!